The solar forcing we've investigated in the modulation of large-scale cells, modes, and circulations, of cloud cover and temperatures and lightning and precipitation, does not fail to affect the most devastating of the weather phenomena, tropical storms, hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones. I do wish climate scientists realized what they know now back in 2014 when this paper was published. While the normal ambient geomagnetic variations do show electric forcing of the lower atmosphere temperature, the joule heating, they suggest a small role played by solar irradiance, implying but not driving home on the point of particle forcing. And their analysis revealed a more extreme story when it came to the geomagnetic storms. We know that irradiance doesn't change much in those either. It's all about the particles. Oh, if only they had gone one step further in 2015 when they solidified the 22-year cycle of tropical cyclone activity, same as the magnetic cycle of the sun. They, too, failed to prove how solar irradiance could muster such a correlation. Of course, the answer there is the particles, too. The rookie in the game. The new guy in town in terms of climate science. We're going to review some real-world correlated events from our past conferences, discuss the happenings since then and their tie to solar activity, look at the more recent research propelling this field forward. This is the relevant portion of our 2015 conference presentation as it appeared in the full movie. And so let's take a look at what happens when the sun fires off and when the sun affects Earth in terms of the tropical activity. The KP-8, the level 4 geomagnetic storm of this summer, was followed just days later by six cyclones popping up in the Pacific. In 2013, we had an X-class flare and magnetic crochet, and just days later we have Typhoon Haiyan. Every single one of those big-time typhoon records are held by either Haiyan or Typhoon Tip, which occurred in October at the exact peak of sunspot activity back in 1979. So, can you guys all see the timestamp down there? Is that sticking out to you guys at all? So we had very, very quiet space weather actually for days and days and days. And then, all of a sudden, the sun woke up. But these were the type of tight, coiled CMEs that, um, that you often see um, really perturbing the inner heliosphere. And of course, this occurred, as I heard somebody say, exactly at the start of Hurricane Katrina. The last time we had an X-10 solar flare or higher was just a few days after that event that caused Katrina, and that was an X-17. And the mid-month storm outbreak was the very last time before this summer that we had five Pacific cyclones at the exact same time. The last time we had a near major solar flare was an X-9 in 2006. We had the Hanukkah Eve cyclone strike Washington. And to set a rain record in Seattle is no small feat. That full presentation back in 2015 covered many more events, but now let's jump to September 2017 once again. This was the next time the sun got really active after 2015, and it was an unexpected flurry amidst months of quiet but it surged X-rays, high-energy proton radiation storms, intense solar wind impacts, and tremendous geomagnetic storm activity. When the first sunspot appeared, Hurricane Harvey ran ashore in Texas, and by the time the major flares were occurring, the hurricanes were surging as well. Irma, Maria, Puerto Rico devastated, Panhandle and Georgia hit hard. It was the last great solar uptick we have had, and in 2019 thus far, the sun has been tremendously inactive, but it is showing signs of coming back to life for another sunspot cycle maximum, set to gear up in the next few months. Okay, flashback over and we're back to part 5 of this follow-up series to the movie. Since 2017, the only solid strong geomagnetic storm we've had came in August of 2018, just as Hurricane Florence was gathering for its run across the Atlantic. While the sun has been quiet here recently, the scientists have not been. While research continued to show modulation of the large-scale cells, modes, and circulations of cloud cover and temperatures and lightning and precipitation, the research demonstrating that space weather affects tropical storms and cyclones has continued as well, including an investigation of that 2017 outburst, although I must say I'm confident that our textbook shows it extended to Hurricane Maria as well. 
The mechanism of focus appears to be on the rapid pressure changes at the surface, something demonstrated in non-tropical storm situations by numerous works in the peer-reviewed literature. The same premise of particle forcing on the global electric circuit and the larger cells themselves, not to mention on cloud microphysics, affects the pressure cells from weak to ultra-powerful in the same mechanisms we've investigated in part two, path to the atmosphere. It's literally the same thing, just applied to the pressure cells that tend to make the news, even if the particle efforts in that application do not. Hopefully you can see we're now building upon the previous episodes. There is more to come. Be safe, everyone.